Welcome to the Best Practices for Accessible Virtual Meetings video. This training video is produced by the Accessibility Policy Unit of the California Department of Social Services. This video will review some basic steps and strategies you can implement to ensure your virtual meeting is fully accessible to participants with disabilities and meets the department's required accessibility standards. Did you know that one in four Americans, and over 10% of all Department of Social Service employees as well as a large percentage of our program participants self-report having a disability? This includes individuals that are blind or visually impaired. Others are deaf or hard of hearing. Some individuals have motor, cognitive, intellectual or neurological conditions. Some have conditions that are visible, while many others have disabilities that are not readily apparent. Some individuals use assistive technology or other types of communication devices and software programs, such as screen readers, text enlargement software, etc. Digital accessibility devices and software can remove many of the digital barriers experienced by people with disabilities, if the documents are properly formatted. Inclusive design planning provides benefits regardless of disabilities by providing a structured format that is easy to follow and can anticipate the user's needs. Two of the most popular virtual meeting platforms used by the Department of Social Services, DSS, are Zoom and Microsoft Teams. Both have accessibility features that benefit individuals with disabilities, if the settings are used. The Americans with Disabilities Act, usually referred to as the ADA, requires public entities like the DSS to ensure their in-person and digital communications, interactions and facilities are equally accessible to individuals with disabilities. This requirement includes members of the general public, program volunteers and our CDSS employees with disabilities. As such, all communications, either internal or external must comply with the required accessibility standards. Now that we have a basic understanding of the department's requirements, let's take a closer look at some proactive steps you can implement to make sure your event is accessible. Here are six suggestions to consider. 1. Make inclusion part of your plan and not an afterthought. Consider accessibility at every stage of the event process from the planning stage to the post-event evaluations. Don't forget to prepare materials in an accessible manner. Do not assume internal or external documents created by others within or outside of the department have already been made accessible. If a PowerPoint presentation, or other type of document, will be used or displayed during the meeting, they should be sent to the attendees before the event begins. Many users find that file sharing within Zoom, Microsoft Teams and other virtual meeting programs can be significantly more difficult once a meeting has started. Sending documents to the attendees will have the added benefit of allowing the invitees to become familiar with the information and result in a more engaged audience. The Accessibility Policy Unit has a variety of resources including training videos, checklists, and publications available to help you create or remediate documents and to ensure their accessibility. When preparing the PowerPoint for the presentation, it is important to pay attention to all elements covered in our online training, as well as, ensuring you create an empty space at the bottom of each slide in anticipation of captions that will be added later. Suggestion number two, it is important to appreciate the diversity of your audience. Some users may be using assistive technology or have other communication needs, Therefore it is important that you adapt your presentation and delivery methods to be inclusive. Suggestion number three, understand how to use the accessibility features. Each of the virtual platforms have specific strengths, weaknesses and settings that can help you maximize accessibility. Suggestion number four, provide your invitees with as much advance notice as possible, so that they can request an accommodation, if needed. When you send your invitation, agenda or meeting outline, be sure to include instructions on whom to contact, and in what time frame, when they have an accommodation request for the meeting. Anticipate your invitee's accommodation needs by knowing how to procure the services of outside vendors like sign language interpreters, or how to implement the appropriate settings requested by individuals with visual or hearing loss. 
Keep in mind that your invitation may be forwarded to other community members, which may result in some invitees making a last-minute accommodation request, nonetheless you should be prepared to respond on short notice. Suggestion number 5, the sudden boom in virtual meetings, has made it more difficult to find and schedule interpreter or captioning services for your meetings. You should make the scheduling of a captioner or sign language interpreter a priority and plan accordingly. And finally, suggestion number 6, reserve a quiet place to hold your virtual event, always use an external microphone for better sound quality and a room with good lighting to improve your overall success. It is important to mention that true accessibility is the byproduct of both the technical aspects and the human participation. Here are some additional presenter tips and suggestions you should consider. 1. Remind the participants and the presenters who are speaking to announce their names. This is especially helpful if you are responding to questions from your participants. This will make the captioning and transcriptions more accurate. 2. If you are planning to create a video from this presentation, make sure the speaker is facing the camera when speaking. This is especially helpful for those that rely on lip reading and for expression. As the facilitator slash organizer, it is helpful to provide some guidance on how speakers should describe things such as images and graphs for people who have visual impairments and who may not be able to see the screen. This doesn't mean the speaker should read every word on the slide but don't assume everyone can see your slides. Speakers should describe charts and images by providing equivalent information such as a short summary. Here are some other tips to consider when using sign language interpreters. Speak at a normal rate of speed. Prior to the meeting, it is always a good idea to send the interpreters any handouts or material you intend to discuss during your meeting. This will help the interpreters become familiar with any technical terms or expressions you will use. Remind the presenters that participants and sign language interpreters may need to have occasional breaks, especially if the meeting is longer than 30 minutes. As with live training, it is important to use a variety of training methods, and to include self-directed or group exercises to keep the meeting interesting and the audience engaged. Remember to check in with the meeting participants at the beginning and during the meeting to ensure they know how to use the virtual platform and tools. If possible, have one of the other hosts handle this part of the presentation. Ask participants to speak slowly, wait for others to finish before speaking, remind everyone to use the raised hand icon, and to identify themselves when they start to speak. The larger the group meeting, the more important these suggestions become. As stressed earlier, if you have been informed that someone with a visual impairment will be participating, you should remind the speakers to summarize the critical information being presented visually. Keep in mind that participants using their screen readers or other assistive technology may need an additional few seconds to access and review the information. Remember that if you are going to post a recording of your presentation it must contain captions. When creating your presentation be sure to leave room near the bottom for captions. You do not want to cover any important information when the captions are added. Although CDSS has a contract with an outside vendor to caption multimedia files prior to posting, you also can caption the file yourself with other software. In either case, the multimedia files must be captioned prior to posting to the web. This completes the best practices for virtual meetings video. We reviewed some steps and strategies you can implement to ensure your virtual meeting is fully accessible to viewers with disabilities and meets the department's required accessibility standards. Ensuring the accessibility of DSS-sponsored virtual meetings and the material we distribute, protects the civil rights of persons with disabilities and enables everyone to equally participate in our services, programs and activities. We encourage you to use the resources available at the Accessibility Policy Unit's web page. For more information about this topic, or any of the topics in our series, please contact the Accessibility and Policy Unit at accessibilitypolicyunit at dss.ca.gov.